Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. I was walking through Harbor Freight yesterday and I saw something that I did not know they had. This, it's a liquid transfer pump, battery operated. What's cool about it that I saw that it's safe for gasoline. And I thought it'd be a great idea to have this for maybe winterizing equipment. It's kind of getting later in the winter. I wish I'd have known about this a couple months ago because I usually use a, like a piece of tubing, rubber tubing, flexible hose, whatever you want to call it. And I kind of suck on it and get a siphon going and siphon the gas out of my equipment. Then I crank it up and run it until it's empty. This will be nice because I won't be getting gas in my mouth or gas all over me anymore, hopefully. We're gonna test it out today and I'm even gonna attempt a runtime test. I just wanna kind of see about how much gas or whatever I expect to get in between batteries. Let's get into it. So here's the pump. I've not used it yet, but I think it's kind of interesting. On most pumps that I've seen, usually the pump's up here and it kind of pulls a vacuum here and goes up. But on this one, the motor is actually right here. So you got your switch right there. Obviously, I'm thinking, assuming obviously, the batteries are gonna go here. Let me get the batteries open. These are the batteries that I bought. These are like the cheapest ones they had. I'm thinking these were like $2.50 or something, which is a really good deal for six batteries. Let me get them open, we'll pop them in. In case you guys didn't know, the spring always goes toward the negative side of the battery or the flat side. Uh, the one with the little nipple on it's the positive. So spring, put the positive end down, drop one in, drop two in, make sure your switch is off because it's usually not a good idea to dry run a pump. We're gonna go start with the diesel. So we can get kind of a runtime test to see how long a set of batteries will actually run. Here's my setup. I have the pump inside of the six gallon container on top of the 55 gallon drum. Now this drum is not as empty as I thought it was, which is good for me because diesel is not cheap. The level is somewhere right in there, so we're not gonna be able to get the full 24 gallons in, but we're gonna use a little pump until we get the diesel level all the way to the top. Uh, I noticed one thing that's not ideal. You can see, if I move this pump around, you can see that the bottom of it only reaches about the two gallon mark. It still helps me out a lot, let me tell you, because that six gallon is not lightweight, especially when you're trying to get it in that small funnel. Two gallons is a lot lighter and easier to handle, and it's gonna help me make a lot less of a mess. Moment we've all been waiting for. I'm actually kind of excited how weird. Um, oh wow. That thing's pumping out actually a lot more than I thought it was going to. Look. I know you can hear the excitement. I'm just kind of shocked that this thing is working and dumping out as much as it is. I'm not gonna record me doing this because who wants to sit there and watch this? We know that it's at the four gallon mark and it's 4.15 and 30 seconds. Okay, so it's starting to pump air. So we're out, let's see what the level's at now. Oh, the timer is 4.17. So what was that, like a minute and a half maybe? The level is right there. I'm gonna go ahead and dump these last two gallons out and then we'll get started on the other tanks. All right, so we got the full tank there. As I said, these hold about six gallons. That one, the other one had about two gallons missing out of it. So this is six gallons. I'm gonna show you the timer. 421, let's wait till it gets to 15 and then. Okay, so 421, 16. It's pumping and when it gets down to around the two, I'll stop it to show you the timer. It just started pumping air and it was at 423.18, I'll say. So it took about two minutes to do almost four gallons. Honestly, I wasn't expecting all this. I was expecting it to do like maybe a half gallon a minute or something like that, or maybe a gallon a minute. But this thing actually just did two gallons per minute. I'm really happy with that, especially for the price. Let's get this one uh, swapped out for another full one and give it another go. Getting down to the two gallon mark here. I want to kind of show you what to expect when it starts sucking air. Hear that sound? Is it run? Oh no. It's not good to run a pump dry. We're really close to the top. I mean, maybe another gallon or something like that. What I'm going to do is put that last one I have on top, pump out as much as I can until it fills us up at the top, and I'll update you with the total. So you can see the level, I think, right now. It's somewhere around a half inch to three quarters inch from the top. I always like to leave an air gap in tanks like this because when it heats up, it expands, and when it cools down, it contracts. And the contracting is not big of a deal, but the expansion is because it'll actually force itself out of this pump 
and go all over the top. As you can see the dirt stuck to it. Yeah, that might've happened in the past. But right now we are at a little over three and a half. The box says the flow rate is six quarts per minute. It seemed to be going just a little bit faster than that. And I'm guessing the reason is because I have the pump setting on top. I have the tank setting on top of what I'm filling, right? So it's kind of creating like a gravity pump. This is gasoline. I'm not advising you one way or the other, but I always clean out. Like just because I had diesel in it just now, I got my air compressor and I blew this thing out until it was almost running drop. If you get a little drops of diesel in a gas engine, it's not really that big of a deal, especially with a six gallon or whatever tank. But if you get a little bit of gas in a diesel engine, it's not good. So always, if you're gonna be doing something, swapping around, make sure that whatever you've used last, that's different, is cleaned out. As you can see guys, this hose could stand to be a little bit longer, maybe another two feet or more. So however afraid if you're watching this, I'm sure people wouldn't mind paying an extra 50 cents or a quarter to extend that hose a little bit. Actually, you can get this hose pretty cheap and that might be a modification I make. The thing is, if you get longer hoses and a longer pump, you're gonna lower your battery life, cause more strain on the motor, but I don't really see an extra foot or two of that hose affecting much. It looks like my lawnmower deceived me like a lot of other things in life. We are a little over two gallons right there. And I think our total before was 12 and a half. So that puts us at 16 and a half gallons. I'm not gonna pour that out. What I'm gonna do is use the remainder three. So that should get us at least 12 more gallons. And then we'll have two, four, six, eight left. And then that'll get us to 16 gallons. I'm gonna go fill my wife's car up because I think it needs, needs maybe six gallons or so of gas. The batteries are still running really strong. So I'm guessing we're gonna get that easy. Let's go find out. So I completely forgot you need a special funnel to fill a car up. So if you plan on taking this with you on a road trip, just in case you run out of gas, always remember to have a funnel or a piece of pipe or something. We got it down to two gallons. So that means we put four gallons in and that actually did fill it up to the top. 20 and a half gallons. Luckily, I didn't have to bring the ladder out here. It is slightly sprinkling, but not enough to affect anything. So I emptied out the other two jugs that you saw that bumped us up to about 28 gallons, 20 and a half. What I did was combine the remnants into another jug, and this is a full six gallon jug, and we're already getting close to the bottom of the pump there. What I do want to point out is, listen, the motor does seem to be a lot weaker. Seems like we're losing power, losing productivity. It is pumping a lot slower for sure because I was able to go in and put the ladder and all that stuff up and come back out here. And you remember in the beginning of the video how quick it was pumping. I'm gonna go put the remainder of this gas in another jug. We have about two and a half left. I'm gonna get all that I can by tilting the jug on its side and pumping it at this truck. I tilted the jug as I was filling the truck up and as you can see, there's hardly anything left in there. So we got most of it. Just for the sake of doing this, just to find out, I filled this bucket up with water. It holds around four and a half, five gallons. As you can see, the bottom's not touching, so it's not blocked off or anything. This thing has just ran out of power to pump any higher than the pump. You can see it's just barely leaking out, look. But if I hold it, it's still got a little bit, but if I hold it up as if I was gonna fill something up, it just the battery just doesn't have the power so i think it's safe to say with the harbor freight batteries you're going to get between 35 and 40 gallons per set of batteries that pump has exceeded my expectations especially for the price it's left it less than 15 dollars out the door with batteries included that was six batteries so that'll get me around 120 gallons with those lower end batteries i say lower end because they have like low grade medium and high and then i think they have rechargeable ones as well i was thinking about going the rechargeable route but for the couple bucks you get 120 gallons because like i said it comes with six i'd probably just stick with using those one thing i really did like about the pump is it's going to make things easier to fill up such as pressure washers and push mowers and my long splitter lawnmower i'm obviously not going to be using it for the truck but i found with those larger six gallon containers uh, i seem to spill gas everywhere and i'm sure you know exactly what i'm talking about even with those new epa rated nozzles that's why i have those that i have i like the little red containers because they're shorter and they would work better with that pump but those things are a pain in the butt with that little latch thing i just don't like it would i buy it again yes it's rated for gasoline so i don't really see anything bad that could happen to it as long as you don't do anything like use it like a hammer or bang it on something or do something it's not made to do it should last a while the motor is submerged in fuel so that'll keep it cool heat is motor's enemy if it's cool should last a long time. I appreciate you guys checking out my video. 
If you liked it, like, and if you will subscribe, please subscribe, it'd really help me out. I got a lot of new videos in the works. I have a huge list of videos I'm gonna make. So stay tuned guys, I appreciate you. See you in the next one.